So we've been doing Casual Geographic for a while. So you guys have really good knowledge at this point to all the horrifying animals that exist in the world around us. But that's not gonna stop us from watching this video. The deadliest man eaters to ever exist. And off we go. Number eight, okay. the spotted devil of Gamalapur. The spotted devil was the nickname Never given to it. one of the most feared leopards to have ever lived. In the 1940s, in the state of Tamil Nadu, India, the leopard would claim 250 miles of jungle as its personal hunting ground. 250 miles? But the reason this leopard was so feared was for its proficiency in hunting humans. Babies. Oh. <laughs> bro, you know you can't trust this dude, man. He put his little dorky face on his little kid. I'm like, yeah, he's gonna X nay the kid A. Now, if this isn't terrifying enough, leopards are nocturnal hunters. So any attack that would be carried out would be in the darkness he of is night. Threatening the baby. You would never see it coming. And 42 people across multiple villages would meet this horrifying That's fate. a lot. The spotted devil became so feared that after a while, people in the villages began to barricade their doors after sunset and refused to step foot outside, including to use the restroom, causing a health crisis in many villages. <laughs> and in its frustration, the leopard would begin to enter homes through windows, what? roofs, or by any means necessary. Are you serious? Snatching people in the dead of night and dragging them into the forest to be devoured. It wouldn't be until the famous hunter Kenneth Anderson was called for help that the leopard would finally be challenged. Anderson was a notorious hunter that specialized in hunting big game animals, especially those that hunted humans. It would take him three nights to finally come face to face with the cat where he would be woken up in the middle of the night by a stray dog that he befriended that night when it began to violently shake with uncontrollable fear. And when Anderson looked up at the roof, he, he would catch there. a glimpse of the devil before losing it in the darkness. He then began to actively search for the cat. And after a few minutes had gone by, he would be alerted by a bark from the stray dog, causing Anderson to quickly turn around and seeing the leopard charging straight at him. And in that instant, he managed to let off three shots from his 405 caliber Winchester, killing the cat in its tracks. After examining the body, Anderson would discover porcupine quails lodged between the toes of the leopard's foot, an injury that prevented it from hunting its natural prey, resulting the animal to turn to human flesh. Uh -huh. As for the stray dog that Anderson befriended during that hunt, he would actually go on to adopt him. Dude, that is a cool ending to the story. But like, if you're hunting an animal that hunts primarily at night, why are you sleeping? And I know things happen. It's probably three long nights for the guy. You know, night one, he probably was really awake and alert. And night two, he's probably really awake and alert. And, alert. and then night three, he was probably just jet lagged. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just saying, you don't have a guy just there poking you with a stick, making sure you at least don't fall asleep. Jesus Christ. I got the details. But again, dog's best friend. Dog's rule. We're moving on. The Tigers of Chowgur. This was a pair of Bengal tigers consisting of an old tigress and her young adult cub, which over the course of five years managed to accumulate 64 confirmed wow. kills. This wow. all took place in the Kumal division in India from 1925 through 1930. India is 0 for 2 for cats. A pair of tigers would turn a 1,500 square mile mountain region into their own personal hunting grounds. Damn. This terrain would include multiple villages which they actively hunted. They would alternate attacks from village to village as this tactic allowed them to catch the villagers off guard. And after three years of pure hell, three the locals years. began to reach out and seek the help of Jim Corbett. Three years? It took y'all three years. Like, okay, we'll give you year one. Mysterious people going missing. Year two, bro, we gotta catch. Is this how long it takes humans to do things? Is this how disorganized we were? It is baffling. We Jim Corbett was an Indian-born British hunter who specialized in hunting man-eating tigers and leopards. Bet. But to catch this pair of tigers, it would take Corbett three separate hunting trips that spanned over a period of two years. God. Eventually, on his third trip on the 19th day, he would finally come face to face with a pair of tigers. He headed to the small village of Kala Agar, which was the last place the tigers were known to be. 
There, he began to hang buffalo meat as bait in the hopes that it would lure out the cats. <laughs> While on post, Corbett would be alerted by a companion that they had heard the lions nearby. Why does the companion look like that? Is this a dig at Indian people? It feels like it, because this guy looked normal. Why does the other guy look like this? And before he knew it, he would turn a corner and catch himself standing right in front of the tigress at a distance of eight feet. She oh, maybe what he's looking, maybe that look is fear. <laughs> just kidding. He, I see the pointing now. Maybe the look is fear. I take it back. I just had to get a second. Hey, it's okay to question everything. All right. She was sitting next That's to a large right boulder when Corbett would take the shot, killing her and putting an end to the attacks. He would then kill the young adult cub shortly after. Damn. Upon further investigation, he would discover that the tiger's claws and canine teeth were broken and her front teeth completely worn down, causing her to turn to humans as her primary source of food. Okay, I'm seeing a trend. Also, that photo's disgusting. Number six, Osama the Crocodile. Osama. This was a terrifying crocodile that lived on Lake Victoria in Africa from the years 1991 through 2005. It is believed that this one crocodile has eaten over 83 people. <laughs> oh it's very gosh. difficult to confirm these numbers since the crocodile would oftentimes attack people that were fishing alone and, of course, would consume them whole. There have been multiple instances where pieces yeah. of clothing would wash ashore from someone who had recently went missing. But sadly, ripped pieces of clothing were not the only thing to wash ashore. Uh, Sometimes an arm or a leg would uh, too. The locals have even reported seeing children dragged from shore uh, after attempting to fill their buckets. But you? the horrifying nightmare doesn't stop there. The crocodile would even develop the skill of capsizing boats by That's slamming the boat from underneath, blooded. sending the fishermen flying into the water. Okay, but why are you drawing this man looking like, they both look like fish. They both look like fishmen. Becoming easy lunch. Fish, this fish crocodile man. was such a menace that he would oftentimes just launch himself vertically out of the water and belly flopping directly onto people's <laughs> boats, clamping onto fishermen's legs and dragging them into the water. And out of all the people this crocodile attacked, only 15 of them would survive to tell the tale. That's but thankfully, impressive. in 2005, the crocodile would finally be caught, He's huge. where he was then killed and made into luxury handbags. Number five. <laughs> Bro, the ultimate human victory, turning your enemies into clothing. The man-eating leopard of Radha Priyag. The first attack came in 1918 in Benji village in the Radha Priyag district of India. This would mark the start of a bloody and gruesome killing spree that would last eight long years, leaving 125 <gasps> people dead. During this time period, very Damn. few people would even dare to step outside of their homes after sunset, fearing that the leopard would be waiting for them outside, as he often would, since he preferred the taste of human flesh over anything else. And when people stopped going outside, the leopard began to adapt. He would begin to break down doors, Bro, leap through windows, and even come in from the roof, which were made from plants. And once inside, he would grab the person and drag them out to the dark forest where he would devour them. After hundreds of people met this fate, units of Gurkha and British soldiers were sent in to track the animal down, but failed miserably. The British government even offered a handsome reward to anyone who could manage to kill the cat. Right, because at this point, India was, it was what, imperialized by Britain at the time or whatever. You know... He's got glass on these windows when they're getting broken down. But he brought up the plant roofs. Did they have, like, windows? Like, I'm not, I'm just, I'm wondering. Did they have, like, glass windows? Did they have, like, some industrious parts of the houses, but just, like, the roofs were just made out of, like, a lighter material so it didn't get so hot or humid? Because I can't imagine them not having glass windows. And many well-known and famous hunters stepped up for the task and failed as well. But on the 2nd of May, 1926, the legendary hunter Jim Corbett would personally take this task on for himself. This would lead him on a 10-week hunt through the jungle, where he would track the cat down and shooting it dead, Why completing a task like that? that many thought was impossible. And after examining the body, Corbett would discover that there was nothing inherently wrong with the cat. 
Oh, well, shit. nothing that would prevent it from hunting its regular prey, oh, since shit. it did have some bullet wounds from hunters who had recently missed its vital organs. But other than that, it oh. was fine. Corbett came to the conclusion that the cat had developed a taste for human flesh when it was still very young. Oh. You see, a cholera outbreak occurred years prior, and many people who died from the disease would be taken to grave sites where they were left unburied. And to a young cat, this would have been easy food. But when the disease inevitably slowed down, He's the crying. bodies did too, <laughs> causing the cat's food supply to dwindle down. So naturally, the cat began to hunt and consume the food that it had always eaten. He's just like... All my easy meals. Humans are like Lunchables. Yeah, a leopard, probably easily 100 O's any human in 98% of scenarios. Like, even with a gun, most people are not trained to shoot it to the efficiency to kill a leopard, right? Like, a t an attacking leopard that has stalked you to eat you. All right, well, hopefully you don't ever miss a meal. <sighs> lest you become a man-eating savage. We'll see you guys in the next one. For those of you that have like aggressive parents, maybe uh, check your mom for spikes that are stopping her from eating her favorite fruit dish or something. Maybe a finger sprain stopping her from holding a spoon and she's taking her anger out on you. Uh, we'll, we'll continue this with part two. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.